Hi, I'm Carl Azus, here to deliver your Wednesday edition of CNN 10. We have some award show trivia coming up in a few minutes, but we're starting with a report on a second summit between two rival countries. There's an interesting standoff taking place between North Korea and the U.S. After meeting face-to-face -face for the first time last summer, the two countries' leaders signed an agreement to establish new relations and work toward peace. But since then, it's as if the two sides are saying to each other, okay, you go first. What do they want? For North Korea, the answer is security guarantees, promises from the U.S. that it will not attack the communist country. It also wants the U.S. to lift the sanctions, the penalties it placed on North Korea because of its nuclear and missile programs. While North Korea has said its nuclear program is a right, the United States and the United Nations consider it illegal. And that's what the U.S. wants, for North Korea to completely give up its nuclear program and never try to develop nuclear weapons. When U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un held their historic meeting on June 12th, they both agreed to give each other what they wanted. So the first step was taken, but it's the next one that's been the hangout. President Trump is obviously very optimistic about the diplomatic process with North Korea. He even said that there's a lot of progress being made behind the scenes that hasn't been reported in the media. But is that progress the arrangement of the second summit? Or is the progress actual uh, compromise on this issue of the timeline of denuclearization and the lifting of sanctions? Because that has been the key sticking point ever since the summit in Singapore on June 12th. They signed a very vaguely worded agreement that didn't have any specifics. Kim Jong-un walked away, perhaps thinking that the U.S. was ready to lift sanctions and provide economic relief right away. President Trump walked away, thinking that perhaps North Koreans were ready to start getting rid of their nukes right away. Obviously, that hasn't happened. Talks have broken down because of the fact that the North Koreans say they need to build confidence with the U.S. and they don't want to give up nuclear weapons until they are completely sold that this process is going to work out. And so the big challenge now is for the U.S. and North Korea to find a way to come closer together on this issue. North Korea wants incremental sanctions relief in exchange for slow steps toward an eventual denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. They also call for corresponding measures, which may include things like a reduction of troop presence, American troops on the Korean Peninsula, or uh, getting rid of the nuclear umbrella that protects South Korea. Those are some big issues that are going to be quite difficult to overcome. We know that there are talks happening in Sweden, uh, lower-level talks. The U.S. Special Representative for North Korea, Stephen Began, and Chae on hee the Vice Foreign Minister, uh, those are some of the issues that they will be discussing at a lower level. And then, of course, the bigger picture, the summit itself, uh, it'll be happening towards the end of February. That's according to the White House and President Trump. Uh, he's not announcing the location yet. Sources are telling me that the most likely option of those that have been thrown around is Vietnam. It's a country that has uh, strong ties with both the U.S. and North Korea. It's a quick trip for Kim Jong-un to go to Vietnam. And Vietnam is a country that fought a war with the United States, rose from the ashes, and transformed its economy, an economic model that North Korea could perhaps follow if they decide to open up their own economy, something that Kim Jong-un has said he wants to do. So the summit is happening, but the big unanswered question, will they be able to accomplish something tangible? Will they be able to walk away with an agreement uh, that actually uh, leads to action, as opposed to what happened in Singapore, where there was uh, lots of smiles, lots of photos, but nothing in terms of denuclearization? Will Ripley, CNN, Beijing. 10 second trivia. The name Oscar refers to a statuette that's officially known as what? Motion Picture Achievement Award, Knight of Film Achievement, Academy Award of Honor, or Academy Award of Merit? Though it's better known as an Oscar, the statuette is officially the Academy Award of Merit. And more than 3,000 of them have been presented since May 16, 1929, when the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences held its first awards ceremony. The nominees for this year's Academy Awards, the 91st in U.S. history, were announced on Tuesday. Observers say there's not a clear frontrunner for Best Picture this time around. Organizers haven't even named a host yet, and ratings for the televised show have been dropping in recent years. But for people in the film industry, an Oscar is still the pinnacle of success. In 1929, studio head Louis B. Mayer handed out the first Academy Awards. There were only 270 guests, the winners had been announced months before, and the whole thing only cost $5 to attend. We have seen the American motion picture become foremost in all the world. Fast forward 90 years, and today the Oscars are awarded in a 3300 seat theater. 
tens of millions of people watch the results live, and tickets cost hundreds of dollars. But the biggest difference? Today's movie studios spend millions to convince the Academy that their films deserve to win. Sometimes the amount of money that a studio will spend when they're campaigning for an Oscar is even more money than the budget of the movie to begin with. That's Kyle Buchanan. He covers all things Oscars for the New York Times. If you want to get your movie taken seriously, you've got to spend. You've got to make sure that there are ads out there, that there are events, that people are contextualizing you as an Oscar contender. And why do studios spend that much cash for an eight and a half pound statuette? For a smaller studio like A24 or Annapurna, the answer is pretty obvious. They're making movies for, you know, not a big budget a lot of the time. But in order to be seen when the marketplace is choked with these big blockbusters and superhero films, they need that sort of extra headline-making ability that an award season can provide. But what about a bigger studio, like Warner Brothers or Universal? As we've seen over the past couple decades, box office hits aren't often considered Oscar contenders and blockbusters don't really need the exposure that a nomination brings. Isn't the money enough of a reward? The people who work on these movies by and large are artists who want to be appreciated as artists by other artists in town. So when they are in contention for an Oscar, it means something deeper. It satisfies them in a way that money can't only. So it's really about talent acquisition and talent retainment. Yeah, it's about making sure that people are happy, you know? We see it all the time when a star has had success and then they want to do something more serious. They want to be understood as an artist with something to say. Is that me? When Warner Brothers goes all in on an Oscar campaign for Bradley Cooper, or Ben Affleck, or Clint Eastwood, it's not just for bragging rights or even a box office bump. No, the studio spends that cash to show commitment to its stars and to keep them coming back for future projects. For example, Hollywood's biggest studio, Disney, is pushing harder and harder for its top blockbusters to be in Oscar contention. What next? But the race isn't just between traditional studios anymore. So why does something like Netflix want to win an Oscar? I mean, it's already the talk of Hollywood. It's one of the biggest media companies on the planet. Why does it need the little gold man? I think Netflix is eager to disrupt any industry it can get its hands on. You know, they've already changed the way that we watch television. Now they want to do the same for movies. Just like any studio, they want to be able to get in the Oscar race so that top tier auteurs will come to them to make movies instead of the big studios that are out there. If they can penetrate this race, there's really nothing that Netflix can't do. They want to upend the idea of theatrical distribution being the end all be all of seeing a movie. They want to change the way you see a movie. And if they can get Oscar to validate that, then they've gotten almost all the way there. The Academy is getting younger and more diverse, and its nominees and winners are shifting too. I think it's good and necessary to recontextualize what we think of as an Oscar contender because it means that a lot of better movies that have maybe been historically overlooked by this season, but have certainly not been overlooked by audience members, can actually get into the race. Over the decades, the Academy Awards have become bigger, more expensive, and maybe a bit more inclusive. But in the end, Louis B. Mayer started the awards to flatter stars into working in his movies. And today's studios will spend more than ever to do just the same. When it comes to this town, when it comes to Hollywood, a lot of people go into the industry, or even before they get into the industry, they've stood in front of that mirror. They've practiced that Oscar speech. It is still the summit of this industry in so many ways. And a lot of people want that to really feel like they've hit the dream that they've always had. Extremely cold weather hit parts of Canada and the northern U.S. recently. The upside? Ice at Niagara Falls. Spectacular scenes were captured recently on the border between Ontario and New York State, including innumerable chunks of ice floating over the falls. Parts of Niagara have frozen before. Whenever temperatures dip below zero Fahrenheit and stick around for a while, you can expect to see clods and clouds of ice. Hard not to falls for that for a spill. We hear the view from the island was the goat, a veritable horseshoe in for photographic excellence. It's a fast breaking update on current events and we thank you for taking the time to watch. I'm Carla Zeus, CNN 10 hopes you'll rush back in tomorrow.